Hi, I'm Dr. David Goldman, speaking today with Dr. Donald Tan, the Medical Director of Singapore National Eye Center. Thank you so much for joining us today. It's a pleasure. I'd like to speak to you today about a device you've invented, the uh, Tan Endoglide. Um, we all know DSEX is a very uh, popular surgery now in the United States and throughout the world. What were some of the motivations and things that you discovered that motivated you to develop this uh, device? Well, I think the DSEC is, is a fantastic uh, new procedure for corneal transplantation. But one of the major challenges today is still to reduce the endothelial cell loss, which comes with the procedure. After all, you're inserting a 8.75 or a 9 millimeter donor through a anywhere from a 4 to 5 millimeter incision. And the studies which have now uh, been published quite clearly show that you're getting uh, endothelial cell loss rates at about 6 to 12 months in the region of anywhere from 28 to 35 percent. And so the main motivation initially for us was to develop a device for donor insertion which would uh, considerably enhance the ability for us to preserve the endothelium. Perfect. And in this device, the tissue is actually loaded into a cartridge which is then delivered into the anterior chamber? Yes. Our second objective, you know, the, the classic uh, technique of donor insertion now is a folding technique with forceps. And uh, to fold the, f the donor and insert it is, is less of an issue technically, but one of the major problems is to unfold the donor and there is a certain loss of control. So a major aspect, a second objective was to make a device which is easy to use, predictable, and uh, in which you actually get better control of the donor and the anterior chamber. And to maintain the anterior chamber, do you need to use an artificial device to maintain the anterior chamber with this device? Most of my DSEC patients are in Asian eyes, and the Asian eye generally is smaller, has a shallow anterior chamber, and uh, also uh, high vitreous pressure. So when we perform DSEC in these eyes, uh, we usually need an AC maintainer. Um, having said that, uh, the endoglide is now being used uh, without an anterior chamber maintainer. Now, is it placed through a scleral tunnel incision or through a clear cornea? Well, I tend to prefer a scleral incision because uh, there certainly is less astigmatism, um, and so that's my current choice. Uh, the endoglide was designed for scleral insertion, but it could easily be for limbo or corneal insertion. Sure. And I've noticed on the device there's a, there's a lip to the cartridge. What is, what is the, the function of that lip? Well, that was an Im important concept. Uh, when you open a wound, and either you don't have an AC maintainer or you have an AC maintainer with positive pressure, when you open that wound, you may get iris prolapse. Uh, and that's very common in high vitreous pressure eyes. Uh, the idea came from our previous technique, which is the uh, Sheets Glide technique, in which we inserted a, an anterior chamber IOL Sheets Glide. And that was really to prevent iris prolapse and to stabilize the eye and to prevent contact uh, with a, either a fake lens or an uh, AC IOL which may be in place. Mm -hmm. So that glide uh, has a very important role because it allows you to insert the, the uh, inserter right through the wound and you don't have any problem of uh, iris popping out and uh, it, it's just a very useful technique to ensure that. Sure. What about, are there any concerns with flipping of the uh, donor <coughs> lenticle? Well, you know, that's been one of the major concerns with donor folding and unfolding. Um, this technique, which is essentially a pull-through technique, because what you're using is that you're using uh, intraocular forceps introduced from the nasal side, and that holds the donor and pulls it in. Now, as long as you hold on to that donor, you have complete control. One of the uh, advantages over some of the other techniques, you know, most of the techniques, uh, they focus on putting the donor in, but then managing control of that donor in the anterior chamber, whether you're unfolding it or uncoiling it, uh, is difficult unless you're holding on to the tissue. Mm -hmm. So one of the, what we always uh, try and tell surgeons who use endoglide is that uh, once you pull the donor tissue in, you can take out the endoglide, you can put in air, you can do whatever you like, don't let go. As long as you don't let go, you have complete control of the donor. In that case, are you marking the stroma anymore? Or? Well, we used to because we thought that uh, there might be some difficulty in seeing the uh, edge of the donor once we insert it through the wound through a very cloudy cornea. But in fact, uh, it, it is very visible because the device is clear plastic. Mm -hmm. And so we've had no difficulty. So we started off with marking uh, the stroma, but we've done away with that completely. And what sort of studies have you done regarding endothelial cell loss comparing this now to traditional forcep folding? Well, you know, we published previously uh, that with the uh, looking at vital dye staining in human eye bank eyes and also scanning electron microscopy, you may get anywhere from about 30% cell loss with the folding technique mm -hmm. with non-appositional forceps. 
um, our sheet supply technique showed about a uh, 9 to 10 percent cell loss using vital dye staining and our prelimin preliminary studies with the endoglide shows about 5 to 7 percent loss in the laboratory. And how have the patients, I understand you've done 20 patients now with this device, how have they done so far? Well we're very pleased at our initial results. Now these are the first 20 right from, the, from a prototype design for the first few cases and uh, firstly we've had no primary graft failures, no dislocation. Um, most importantly are the endothelial cell counts. So we are looking at a uh, endothelial cell loss at three months of about 15 percent and at six months about 19 percent. Now this is far lower than any other published study so far that I'm aware of. So the primary objective of the endoglide which was to deliver a safer and more endothelial uh, friendly uh, uh, treatment for DSEC, I think uh, we're hoping that that's been achieved now. Absolutely. Well, I know we're all looking forward to using it here in the United States. Thank you so much for joining us today. You're very welcome.